Good evening, and welcome to VerseFest 2021. This event is called Director's Choice, and I'm the director, and these are my choices. It features the work of two brilliant poets, Canisia Lubrin and Anne Carson. But before we get there, I need to say thank you to some of the sponsors who have supported us through what's been a, a challenging couple of years. The Canada Council, the City of Ottawa, the Ontario Arts Council, Heritage Canada, and the Ontario Trillium Foundation have all been important contributors. And there are, of course, many more, all of whom will get some love as we proceed through the next week. I do also want to say thank you to our volunteers. Since we're mostly online this year, our volunteer commitment is uh, a little bit less, but it's still there. And our volunteer board and the festival organizing committee have been working throughout the year. We're raising funds and putting the program for the festival and for other events together. This year, there are almost 80 poets working with us, and about 60% of them are women. A bit more than 20% are French language poets, which is down from our usual 30% for several COVID-related reasons. 25% of the poets are people of color, and a further almost 10% are indigenous performers. The queer community is well represented. And I should mention that VerseFest is working with Ottawa Q Arts uh, to produce a big poetry and music event next spring, uh, which will feature the work of poet John Barton. While we have very few careful online events this year, we are once again, mostly online. Most of them are live online. This is the only one that's pre-recorded. Given the busy schedules of everybody involved, that's the only way we could get it done. The first poet you're gonna to hear tonight is Canisia Lubrin. Her first major collection, Voodoo Hypothesis, came out in 2017. And it established her very clearly as a poet to watch. Her follow-up work, The Disgraphist, was published in 2020, and it promptly won the Griffin Prize, the Derek Walcott Prize, a Wyndham Campbell Prize, and the Bocas Prize for Car Car Caribbean Literature, to mention only a few. The Disgraphist is a long poem full of prickly, energetic language that both provokes and soothes an ongoing quest for identity, no matter how unsettled and contingent that identity might be. We've invited Canisia to VerseFest before on several occasions, and <laughs> we could never make the schedules work out. So we're happy to have her with us virtually this evening. Here she is reading from section two of the Disgraphist. Uh, my name is Kenesia Lubrin, and it's a pleasure to be here at VerseFest 2021. Um, thank you to everyone who made this possible. Um, given the world that we have, uh, it's, it's, it's too bad we can't be together in the same room because I am unable to join you there. I will read from act two of the Disgraphist, uh, Disgraphist being a poem in seven acts. And this act is called Ain't I Nickname for Home. Turning homeward on a foot two shoe sizes into adulthood, Jejun returns with fire in the veins, with a voice dug up from the middle sea, 
hitting the market crowd of stones in the spirit of recklessness, in the 401's meandering, and all the shortened lives arrayed as welcome, though it is not a welcome that Zhijun seeks, nor dangles from bare hands, set to the work of measuring the distance between eyes, hips, and the descending wail of city women in the middle of the square, I says. Touch anywhere and begin, or press enter. Jejun, exhume I's tongue from the buried records, as you'd asked when we were ten. Except do not lob it at the floating hand I sent there a decade earlier to wait. Because now, Jejun, you must hand the beacon back to I, cutting red a road through this border before the hand with its index pointed at the temple of the complete world realizes it is not always foolish to rouse a sleepless thing, to offer pills for it to stay awake, to witness the columns of ash and smoke taking the tsunami by surprise, just as the gods who sell their dead to stay awake before the concrete slabs close in on promises for doing better. The self in voluntary hours of driving toward debate. The self for minutes and hours forgets about survival and heaves a beauty from the radio. Aretha Franklin today, another voice tomorrow. That desert sugared with these wrong selves. We rush and shape stone, not carried, but accrued, where I layers its new language taking back the miserly mouth, mouth that sours the pot in our big beautiful, big beautiful. Ain't the monstrous always intimate? And before any protest turns it inward, inmate into a vineyard, ain't there a mole digging 1,000 years into the past? As by this interruption, do you accept this collect call, this collect that call, accept the charges, how I, now the daughter is here forgetting the voice of her father or whomever the father voiced. Magnum mi facit dominus, dwindling away some rubbery word for fire or a glance back to something sincere. Jejun, all of these words inflate our undivided lives anyway and offered back, fashioned as a window, diminishing I into something like wind, across language, across the cello, across plastic stretching for miles out of our fingertips, jejun into thesis, now so-called cunning, before one eye as extended ablution, toward maybe the lightning that drew new corridors across the sky. Jejun, now that you are here, can you tell I, apart from this country belonging to nothing this far bled and no further, from the still unheard reams I must enter, this great hall, a cemetery, already owed, O Deo Domine, a fading agreement before a horde, jurors powdered and wigged, titrate and promulgated meaning well before this wide togetherness of what is simple, spores for a tournament in the age of sleet. A single ounce was enough to end the father I must defend. What's a duty done? What's a word that will do? Does I bring more than that, Jejun? Say the bulk of broken bones between these hands that cannot mend them. Yet it can't be that. No line is so straight. It mustn't be the years scribbled on already, turning against that childy liquid with touch into something of a personhood. Nothing worse, what is some faith in neurons, in the intangible quarrels of having and letting, in eyes gray mood. To have not some need, come on soil, to have needed the abacus gouging the arteries of a dead heart 
careful to take its holes, its chambered script for whole notations. Whose words make a return to the call of man o' war, doved through a clog full age? Can you reach jejun between the small hour and the gathering and pluck I out before a duel to the death? Is that not why you came, Shijun? Are all of these words asleep this century anyway? So now I counsel at the inroads how to cart through what could be too much to confess. Raise a hand if you know what kind of body lives in another kind of mouth. A whole life with the same friends, in the same house, the same lovers, dance of the same dance. To have eaten the same, the walking, passing, sobbing, the same dog crowded parks, black and pink beaches, some love for words, the mod script of algebra, language of oil, a madhouse, real, watch with deafness, the gabled roof, fences, cars, the many rooted book. So that is enough, as all exception must be refused entry into this collection. If all of this sophistry is meaningless, speech branching out of shipwreck, some altered sense. Jejun and I and I find the highest point in the city. We rub our eyes with juniper and thought of states, merely recognizable by their vulnerable curves into nothing or nothing of what was said before survives. Past a tug, not persuasive, but a tug on exhausted neural membranes, crossing streets, cutting new ideogram for volcanic jackdaws. All of the journey now, the fate of everything dubbed unclean. And we vote to enjoy the view that we know is indifferent to our love. Jijun, all of these words are our dark twin anyway. So what is the point of the judge in that case where the father confesses what is better than to conspire with who would free I or Jijun or any number of us now, a blend of tempers, some crest of white hair. No, ain't is too much thinking to ask. Whatever I is, is. Do not think I not enough or too much of an invention, like the wheel, like the clock, too much of an invention, like the wheel, like the clock that bears repeating. These cracked elbows, the only sign of time passing at the junction where Jejun leans into I, with hands ready to feed the open mouth self. What if anything is like charcoal, lit like what fills the sketcher's hand, not a tint impaired in the sun bright past, like fox is only more robust than memory. Who can ask for this long companionship, the least gravitational offense in any hemisphere? How much longer will I fill this long ampulla of somebody's world? Who is worth that much? Who is ever this true, please? You do not ask for too much that the mechanics should not conceal the message or concede the foreclosure of lost generations to a clause. The message is concealment. What more can be taken? Spared. Now, even with a percussed tongue, I can put the world back together with the twisted timbers of a ship from some unknown century. Okay, maybe give I some spices. Give I the whole shape of a metamorphosis to wear. Give I the Labrador Sea and the 900 feet between the black skin and the blow it dislodges. Give I the sharp and wary self. Give I your infant's breath cleanly locatable thing, a clearly thinkable thing. 
None of it is pitiable that I speaks, the too many clever variables, the heart-worn brain-shorn light that clings newly to those friends choosing to go alone, all of them grasping for the sun, now boarding the dark boat or the freeway. Jejun, all of these words lift a hand to canopy the non-world anyway, as though time owes us something, but I know Time is still a small person worn out of dimensions. Time's tenses are trades for smugglers. Who knows? Why should anybody love the small? And wearing bandanas, now the judge, I must leave, but I knows. I is never leaving. I walks briskly past the man, white haired, on a wheelchair, at the door, wearing gaps for teeth his cheeks swallowing the pre-dawn dark. Do not mention the mother in the morning, only the wind as the man's only greeting, night through day since June, 1965. Does I go past him? I does, wet and exposed. I wonders, is the man a father? Jejun, what sense is there in such interrogations? Or in time? In what tense the man is keeping time? For I again, against this palmless clasp and a better judgment, I returns. I rests one tired hand on the man's bare head. And I does not mention the salamander or the parasite from 1992. Jejun, then the doctor expunged. I cannot know the depth of its poison. Going this way, let the man mistake I for home. The confessed compromise of the father then, a killing plot, the Mary Jane worth jail time, now given a stately stamp, and other things not enough, like love and folly. And now I is otherwise again. Jejun, all of these words, our waterlogged birthday, anyway. Except to be wrong again in this unthinkable season, unbearable. This cause entreated by swales of violinists, the thinkable novels I speaks in a look to jolt him alive, to jolt us, me, ah, there, finally, standing among the seated, I arrive. I wake remembering nothing but the locomotion of lips, maybe mine, maybe the page and some faulty language. Do not excuse me. I am not what I say. I have become the clearing wave. Open, I exist, yes, but where am I? As much as I can enter these terms of feeling, I know. Here I am fiction. I won't come back now from imagining into I. There are worse fates, I understand. Here I am, the burned drop of that telephone beep. Thank you so much for listening. Please enjoy the rest of the festival. And I wish you every good thing in this world. Thank you, Kinesia. The second segment of this program comes from Anne Carson, who is also a writer we've uh, invited repeatedly to Verse Fest. Every year, many months in advance, we'd send her a really brief and polite little email saying we'd be honored if she would join us. And uh, a few days later, we'd get a equally short and equally polite email back saying that thank you but uh, she just wouldn't be available so this year when she offered to do something online we were quick and happy to accept and carson is a trained classicist and a translator and that background routinely informs her poetry so to hear references to Sappho or Euripides or Thucydides 
and others is the norm, although the references are often reworked in a very contemporary and often ironic way. In fact, the contemporaneity of ancient and modern is one of the great attractions of her work for me, and I think for many others. Her publication list is long, and her list of awards is astounding. She was, for instance, the very first woman to win the T.S. Eliot Prize in 2001. And just last year, she won the Princess of the Asturias Award for a body of work of enduring originality and consummate craftsmanship. And of course, she's the current GG holder for Norma Baker, Norma Jean Baker, sorry, Norma Jean Baker of Troy. Her reading tonight is based on an early book, 1992's Short Talks, first published by Brick. But as you will quickly see, this is an updated version with several new and different components, but with the surprise and the compassion that regularly marks her poetry. Here's Ann Carson in a cowboy shirt. Good evening. I'm Ann Carson. I'm going to read some short talks for you, both old ones and new ones. But first, I'd like to begin with my otter joke. Here's how it goes. Where do otters come from? Now you say, I give up. Otter space. That's the best joke in the world. Short talk on Homo sapiens. With small cuts, Cro-Magnon man recorded the moon's phases on the handles of his tools, thinking about her as he worked. Animals, horizon, face in a pan of water. In every story I tell comes a point where I can see no further. I hate that point. It's why they call storytellers blind. It is a taunt. Short talk on where to travel. I went traveling to a wreck of a place. There were three gates standing ajar and a fence that broke off. It was not the wreck of anything else in particular. A place came there and crashed. After that, it remained the wreck of a place with the light falling on it. Short talk on major and minor. Major things are wind, evil, a good fighting horse, prepositions, inexhaustible love, the way people choose their king. Minor things include dirt, the names of schools of philosophy, mood and not having a mood, the correct time. There are more major things than minor things overall. Yet there are more minor things than I have written here. But it is disheartening to list them. When I think of you reading this, I do not want you to be taken captive, separated by a wire mesh lined with glass from your life itself, like some Electra. Short talk on walking backwards. My mother forbade us to walk backwards. That is how the dead walk, she would say. Where did she get this idea? Perhaps from a bad translation. The dead, after all, do not walk backwards, but they do walk behind us. They have no lungs and cannot call out, but would love for us to turn around. They are victims of love, many of them. Short talk on sleep stones. 
Camille Claudel lived the last 30 years of her life in an asylum, wondering why, writing letters to her brother, the poet who had signed the papers. Come visit me, she says. Remember, I'm living here with mad women, days are long. She did not smoke or stroll. She refused to sculpt. And although they gave her sleep stones, marble and granite and porphyry, she broke them, then collected the pieces and buried these outside the walls at night. Night was when her hands grew, huger and huger, until in the photograph, they are like two parts of someone else loaded onto her knees. Short talk on hedonism. Beauty makes me hopeless. I don't care why anymore, I just want to get away. When I look at the city of Paris, I long to wrap my legs around it. When I watch you dancing, there is a heartless immensity, like a sailor in a dead calm sea. Desires as round as peaches bloom in me all night. I no longer gather what falls. Short talk on Homer and John Ashbery. Homer's Odyssey, Book 24. The souls of the suitors all go down to Hades. Hermes leads them, gibbering like bats, past the white rock of Leucas, other underworld landmarks, past the daemon Oneron, which Homer leaves undescribed and unexplained. Demos means people, population, country. Oneros means dream, so a demographic of dreams. My friend Stanley Lombardo, translator, translates it the dream deem. So how would this work? Is it a big file catalog with all the dreams waiting in alphabetical order to slip into some head at night? Or are they standing around with martinis? So bored by signifying they lie on the ground in heaps. Have they a gift shop, selling books by Adorno? Do they form factions and animosities? Perch on chairs like an audition. Smell of sweat, exhaustion and tears. Or are they blissed beyond meaning, barefoot, organized by gentle bells? Do they practice all the time to keep in dream shape, or is it more like perfect pitch? Are there dream trees to shade them, and small dream boys who hide up there while their mothers search for them down below? Do the dream streets fill with mobs of people sifting fast and slow at once over the sidewalk, each person sealed into a private membrane as clear and dense and general as death? If there are dogs in the dreams, do they need to be walked? If Freud is there, is he aloof or enjoying himself? Down the road from the summer cottage of my friend Stanley Lombardo, translator, is a farm where emus and llamas graze. On the fence, a sign informs us, llamas hum to their young. Do not worry, the sign implies humming is okay. Does the demographic of dreams emit a worrying hum? Emus are, in appearance, plucky and plunging creatures, mostly torso. Llamas are stately, with an air of deep comedy, and larger than they seem. You hit one of those, you can say goodbye to your car, commented Stanley Lombardo, translator. He told me llamas never stop moving their ears, even when asleep. Whether they stop moving them when asleep inside a dream is a question to be considered 
in a forthcoming short talk on Stanley Lombardo, where I hope to compare Stanley Lombardo, translator, with John Ashbery as a personality disposed to careless joy in any situation. About a year before he died, I attended an interview in which John Ashbery was present via Skype due to being 90 years old and tired. The interviewers were a little afraid of him, two interviewers, groping for a way to engage a conversation. One mentioned a book she claimed John Ashbery had written entitled Light. Ashbery denied this. She insisted. She had the book at home on her bookshelf. Ultimately, they decided it must have been an issue of Art News magazine on this theme. So, John, can you say something about that? Asked the other interviewer. To which Ashbury, after a very long pause, replied, Light, what would we do without it? Short talk on Hegel. It was the year my brother died. I lived up north and had few friends, or they all went away. Christmas Day, I was sitting in my armchair reading something about Hegel. You will forgive me if you are a person who knows a lot of Hegel or understands it. I do not and will paraphrase badly. But I understood him to be saying... He was fed up with popular criticism of his terrible prose, and claiming that conventional grammar, with its clumsy dichotomy of subject and verb, was in conflict with what he called speculation, speculation being the proper business of philosophy, speculation being the effort to grasp reality in its interactive entirety. The function of a sentence like, reason is spirit, was not to present a fact about reason, he said, but to lay reason side by side with spirit and allow their meanings to tenderly mingle in speculation. I was overjoyed by this notion of a philosophic space where words drift in gentle mutual redefinition of one another but at the same time wretchedly lonely with all my family dead, and here it was Christmas Day. So I put on big boots and coat and went out to do some snow standing. Not since childhood have I done snow standing. I had forgot how astounding it is. I went to the middle of a woods. Fir trees, the teachers of this, all around. Minus 20 degrees in the wind, but inside the trees is no wind. The world subtracts itself in layers. Outer sounds like traffic and shoveling vanish. Inner sounds become audible. Cracks, sighs, caresses, twigs, bird breath, toenails of squirrel. The fir trees move hugely. The white is perfectly curved, stunned with itself. Puffs of ice fog and some gold things float up. Shadows rake their motionlessness across the snow with the vibration of other shadow moving crosswise on them, shadow on shadow in precise velocities. It is very cold and that too begins to subtract itself. The body chills on its surface, but the core is hot, and it's possible to disconnect the surface, to withdraw to the core, where a ravishing peace flows in. So ravishing I am unembarrassed to use the word ravishing, and it is not a piece of separation, but the washing through piece of looking, listening, feeling at the very core of snow at the very core of the care of snow. It has nothing to do with Hegel, and he would not admire the clumsily conventional sentences in which I have tried to tell about it. But I suspect 
If I had not been trying on the mood of Hegel's particular grammatical indignation that Christmas day, I would never have gone out to stand in the snow, or stayed to speculate with it, or had the patience to sit down and make a record of speculation for myself, as if it were a worthy way to spend an afternoon, a plausible way to change the icy horror of holiday into a sort of homecoming. Merry Christmas from Hegel. And finally, short talk on Gertrude Stein about 9.30 p.m. Well, you know, I wonder. There it goes. Today has ended. Thank you and good night. Thank you all for listening. I want to remind you that VerseFest 2021 is running all week with two online events uh, tomorrow evening. You can register for them at the VerseFest website and a live event at Knox Presbyterian Church on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. hosted by Art Poetry Magazine and featuring four Canadian poets. You can check the website for the details. Until then, have a good night.